a little basis of, of, uh, of some brain information for understanding what happens in the brain when children and adults have strong emotions. So we're going to focus on the limbic brain, that part again, if you were making the fist with your thumb on the inside and the fingers on top, it's the, the thumb is on the inside, the limbic brain is the part we're going to focus on. So I want you to keep in mind that there is no such thing as an individual human brain. The human brain we, is designed to be constantly paying attention to and tuning into those around us, in particular the limbic system. That is the limbic system's function, to be noticing what others around us are, are feeling and if it's safe. Um, we are social creatures, so although obviously we do have a brain when we're on our own, we're always, in some way, thinking of other people, even if it's sitting at home, figuring out how we can uh, take care of ourselves so that we can be a better therapist or a better parent. Or if we are reading a book and thinking about the social dynamics of what's happening in that. And certainly, anytime you're around someone, even if you're not looking at them, your limbic system is scanning to tune in to their their emotions and their field. And we know this intuitively. When you walk into a room of people, if something tense has happened, you, you sense it. Um, the, the limbic system sort of shortcuts all of the little nonverbals that we need in order to know what is happening socially and the emotions that are going with that. And the limbic system says, oh, hey, this feels tense. There's a little bit of danger here. Something's, something just happened, even though you might not be able to tell by what people are saying. So that's the limbic system's job. And the limbic system is fully developed at birth, whereas the neocortex takes some people say up to 25 or 30 years to fully develop, certainly, certainly at least into the early 20s. So people are born with the ability to feel the full range of emotion um, for the most part. And the ability to control how it comes out and to control what we say and when we... Um, want to hit or yell but choose not to that takes many decades to fully develop okay so the limbic system is constantly scanning for safety now this is very relevant for children a child's brain is particularly sensitive to if it's safe because their survival depends on it they are incredibly human youth are incredibly vulnerable and so they need to have a sense of if it's safe around them at all times so that's the limbic system's job it's sort of a radar sending out a signal saying am i safe am i safe am i safe am i safe all the time for children now if no one is available if an adult is not available to pay attention to a child if they are having a moment of feeling disconnection, the limbic system sends an alarm. And that varies depending on the sensitivity of the child. Some children are, by birth and by circumstance, more resilient to when safety is not around. They can come back to the alarm doesn't signal quite as strong. And others signal quite strong, even if a, a parent simply turns away for a moment to pick up, uh, pick up a phone call, that alarm will, will sound very strongly. And so what happens then? What happens when uh, a child's brain is signaling alarm, their limbic system is saying it's not safe because no one is paying attention to me in this moment, therefore I must not be safe. We call that limbic hijack. You can all, we also talk about it as flipping your lid. Dan Siegel talks about this. So if you go back to the to using your fist as a model of the brain with the thumb on the inside and the fingers on top of the thumb, the, the 
the fingers, which would be the neocortex, flip up and you flipped your lid, your, like a raw limbic system with um, little ability to think well. All of the attention, all of the awareness, all of the blood and energy go into the limbic system, um, the emotional system, to, to um, signal to the adults around, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, until the, the adults are able to attend again and then the child is able to come back to a feeling of, of safety in their whole brain. So <clears throat> we'll go more we'll go more into a minute why that might happen, but let's just take for a moment that that does happen. If, if a child is feeling disconnected, and an adult is not able to pay attention, they go into limbic hijack. Now, how do we heal limbic overload? Humans heal limbic overload bodily. Peter Levine, who did a lot of work on trauma, studied this in animals and has written quite a bit about it. And so we know that tears, when we are crying tears of grief, those actually have cortisol in them, which is the stress hormone. So if you are crying tears of grief or stress, it's releasing that limbic hijack. It's releasing that limbic overload. Tantrums, um, in particular, when the body gets hot and perspires, but this sense of righteous indignation, like something's not right in the world and it needs to be changed, that is a very important human feeling. And when the limbic system is overloaded by a sense of injustice, a tantrum can help to release that limbic hijack. So laughter is also in a very important way that the limbic system releases a, a feeling of being overloaded. Um, there have been some studies in um, the therapy realm around how laughter can release the stored memories or the way that memories are stuck in trauma. Uh, I don't know too much about this, but I know there's something around that the way that they encode in the hippocampus is um, it's like they get stuck in a loop and with laughter, it, it sort of, it releases that and allows, allows um, memories to go into sort of a long-term memory storage where they're more integrated into the whole brain, where the whole brain can understand them. Um, and we know this also intuitively when we're, when we're completely overwhelmed by life or by, uh, by our work, when we laugh about it with friends, we feel the load lighten. The limbic system is less overwhelmed. And this is true for children too. Not by tickling. Tickling is different, but when children laugh about, uh, laugh while in connection, the limbic system can release. Shaking is another way that the limbic system releases emotion. We know this from, um, you know, if you've ever been in a car accident or many women after childbirth, the body will start to tremble. Um, I've seen this many times with, with children. The jaw starts to tremble. Um, and when you pay close attention to yourself, you might notice it too. It's a way that the body releases deep fear. And yawning and stretching. So these are all just the natural mechanisms that our bodies have to release limbic overload. 